All right. So, Alex, what kind of music do you listen to, if you don't mind me asking you? I'm mostly, oh, gosh, I mostly listen to indie rock. Um, indie rock? Yeah. Yeah. And lots of British rock and stuff like that. I love, I love. Any bands <laughs> want to drop for the discerning among us to go frantically check oh, out later to act gosh. like we're cool? Well, I would say my, my all time favorite band would be Wolf Alice, um, who, uh, yeah, I definitely in that rock genre. Um, yeah. And in, very indie, I think, um, yeah. oh, gosh, I can't think of anything really uh, bigger right now. I'm listening to a lot of Hosier at the moment. <laughs> oh, fair. Man of good taste for sure. Yeah. 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 How old for, so Wolf Alice for that? Is it a band? Is it a single person? Yeah, it's a band. Um, and I think they're, oh, they, they've been making music for a decade now. And I think they're in their mid thirties, maybe early to mid thirties. I think I'm not sure. Yeah. Perfect. And that yeah. was actually going to be the exact next thing I asked you. So thanks for setting that one up for me. Okay. So yeah. So indie <laughs> rock, I am certainly isn't a completely new genre, right? Cause you, even no. just your example, they've been around for 10 years, but I don't think my Nana who's turning, I believe 88 next month. Uh, she wasn't listening to a lot of indie rock back in her her sort of teens, 20s or anything mm. like that. Does that seem like a fair? She could have just been missing out, but I think it was generally because there wasn't a lot of indie rock. Back then. Yeah. Now, the reason I've sort of um, wanted to have that little bit of a conversation first is there is a chart I have on the screen, and this was really sort of doing the numbers on social media, actually probably about 10 years ago, I think, at this point, um, maybe a little less. But it was a really interesting study that someone had done looking at kind of like the survival of musicians. Now, have you guys heard of the idea of like the 27 Club, like Kurt Cobain and Amy Winehouse tragically dying really young? Mm -hmm. um, and Jimi Hendrix as well? Oh, I think you might be right. Jimi yeah. Hendrix as well, yeah. 27? Yeah. yeah, so some like iconic, basically, members mm -hmm. of this pretty tragic um, <laughs> club idea. And so I think that probably you might also have the general sense that certain types of music are associated with like harder living. So there might be like drug culture or it might be a lot more common to be shocked or something like that. Like mm -hmm. it could be dangerous to be a popular musician in certain genres and certain places in the world, right? We don't tend to think of jazz as that dangerous in the modern era. I don't know about you, but I haven't heard too many jazz musician rivalries ending with a shootout, at least this year, you know, maybe last year. Mm -hmm. So the graph that I have in front of me and the last fifth thing I wanted to share with you, because I think it comes up a lot in things we see in our lives, but isn't necessarily something we even teach in like an intro stats course or teach people or do a good job of teaching people. And I, I take that blame on myself. So on this chart, you have a range of different genres from blues at the far left end down to like rap and hip hop on the far right. And the graph, there's a couple of things wrong with this graph and I'll, there's a link that I can share if you want to go deeper into it. But basically, the sense of this graph is you can see that U.S. female and male life expectancy has sort of increased over time. But you can see really big differences between musicians who are like blues, jazz and country who are kind of doing pretty well for the national averages. And yet you're seeing this really shocking sort of dip for more um, what you might associate with like harder lifestyles these days, perhaps in punk and metal and rap and hip hop. And so the reason this chart was so popular is, and we've just had this conversation, right? 27 Club, you can see in your head, you know, how many rap songs do I know that are about drugs? A lot more than I know that are about jazz. Then again, Frank Sinatra got up to some stuff with the Rat Pack. But anyway, this, if you take a quick look, sorry, <laughs> you can see where my musical reference points are coming in. Taking a quick look <laughs> at this graph, imagining it comes up on your Facebook feed, or at the time it was published, your Twitter feed, it really sort of confirmed things that people kind of already might have had a vibe on. And so it got shared and was really used to kind of, you know, beat up metal rap and hip hop for those terrible lifestyle choices. The thing that we sort of talked about, Alex, though, with the genre that you like with indie rock is it's not that old a genre. So some of the sort of leading lights in it are probably not even that old, right? So the band you were talking about are in their 30s. Um, you could argue to you were blue in the face about the origins of rap and hip hop, and they all have deep historical origins, but as popular music genres that are recognizable, they're not very old. You know, the 70s, maybe. 
So for you to be an artist in that genre, you haven't had a chance to live to a ripe old age yet. You cannot be a hundred and have started as a rapper in your twenties at this point. That's just not, unless you're doing some time travel, that's probably not going to math. The math is not mathing. You absolutely can be a hundred year old former jazz singer um, because jazz has been around for a long time. And this is, um, it's a subset of things that are sort of these survival or, so, or selection biases, but this is a specific subset. So the vocab I'm going to drop on you is this idea of right censoring. So censoring, you might think of in Alex is like um, in media as if I was putting my black redacted tape over, over text. And it is kind of that idea. I can't see into the future. No matter how good I get at statistics, I do not get that power. And by my inability to see into the future, I, it, it is censored to me. It is redacted. It is a black line on the text of the future. And so I can't see how long the people who are still alive are going to live. I can only see the people who have currently died. And because it's a young genre, if you've died, you've died young at this time. So 400 years from now, when the ethnomusicologists do this graph again for these exact same sets of, of genres, and we've far moved past them into super techno solar cyberpunk, uh, we will probably see all of these look pretty similar because they will just be people who are making music and dying like all people do. Is that, is that an upbeat thing to finish your podcast on? <laughs> yes. And music and rock and roll. <laughs> I mean, kind of. It's, it's good to yeah. know that Snoop Dogg and Eminem and all will probably live to this average age of most jazz musicians. If maybe yeah, we, we, we have it a while longer. I'm I, so I, thankful. I guess, I guess with the graph as well, with as it shows increasing life expectancy as well as life expectancy goes up you might even see 100 years down the line some rock and hip-hop and all these artists actually exceeding or going over right because uh, i love that yeah. because yeah the music they play is probably not the driver of their longevity exactly as you're saying the context they live in with better medicine we know mm -hmm. you shouldn't smoke now like all of that societal knowledge is probably going to be a bigger driver for the majority of musicians for what their long-term health looks like not just that they are like cool and hip and slightly emo bands or whatever uh, that's such a good insight because yeah that's exactly right those ethnomusicologists 400 years from now might see something that looks completely inverted from this where you go wow what good health all our hip-hop stars were in how delightful <laughs> wow i i hadn't even um i hadn't i hadn't realize i was trying to make sense of this graph myself like, what, it's a what, what tricky one the, i don't what, what could it. be the thing yeah no that's great though that it um i, I that the, the youth of the genre um means that you just every, that line you said you only have the data of the people who have died and because the genre is young they've died young so it's going to mm -hmm. skew it completely i just didn't even make that connection that's wow I think yeah, that was a great one to, you, to end on. <laughs> your first thing is already like, oh yeah, this agrees with my preconceptions. And yeah. I will be fair to the original author that she does mention that, or I believe it was she. Or, the author mentions this as a confounding feature, but you can't mm -hmm. see that from this chart because as we were talking about before, anytime you attempt to simplify, you lose nuance. Mm -hmm. And that's actually really a hard kind of thing to get across in a graphic. You'd really have to change the graphic here. And so I think whoever probably put this together was doing the best with what they had. Uh, but a really key part of the understanding of the way to think about this data in order to understand it, completely gone if you don't have the little questioning voice, the little statistician who sits on your shoulder and asks you these questions. Would a more, let's say, quote unquote, fair, or I don't know if that's the right word, graph be something that looked at the relative use of these genres and then went back to something like blues and said, looked at the first, let's say, 30 years and then looked at the 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 debt. They I don't know. I don't even know how you do that. But comparing the same wow. band of time would probably provide a more equal result. Right. That's a fantastic idea, because exactly if you were interested, if you changed your research question a little bit and were like, which genre of music saw the worst premature death rate? And you mm. go death before 30 or death before 35, pick something that seems kind of fair based on some of the genres you're picking. Mm -hmm. um, that's a fabulous question, Alex. And that would give you probably a really different insight where mm. 
if it's old, old blues or jazz, you might be seeing people who are still suffering from tuberculosis, people who are dying yeah. in World War II when, um, like, you know, they, there's all these other features that exactly as Sahir was saying before, you might actually see that there's lower premature mortality in some of our modern genres because these folks haven't gone to fight in a war. They have access to um, treatment for tuberculosis. Like a lot of the things that are actually driving mortality here are not your taste in music. Mm. Wow. That's such a good question. <laughs> I, that was really good. I think, I think that's a good place to end on. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Really?